In this video, I'm checking out the Viltrox 20mm f2.8 prime lens from a videographer's perspective. It's extremely cheap, extremely small, and unbelievably light. Oh, I've got questions I want answering about this. Can this actually be good? Is it priced correctly? Is it for any kind of professional filmmaking? But why am I asking all these questions? I should explain how I came to review this. My dad is a very good photographer and a Fuji user. Oh, sorry guys, hang on. Hello? Dad? Yeah. Yeah, I said it. I said, yeah, I said very good photographer. Yeah, I, I mentioned Fuji, yeah. I don't know, uh, PayPal? A bank transfer, which whatever, yeah, whichever one, just yeah, get it sorted. Okay, All right, bye, bye, bye. Sorry about that. Love you, Dad. Anyway, the other day he shows me this new lens he's got, and it's a Viltrox for his Fuji. And I I'd been hearing a little bit more and more about Viltrox, uh, but never really kind of thought to to review them. And he he's just like, you you got to, you've you've just got to. The very next morning, I'm not joking, there was an email in my inbox from Viltrox saying, hey, you wanna check out this lens? And I was a bit spooked. But you know, I took it as an omen. I thought, yeah, and I, I said, you know, look, fine as long as I can, you know, as long as there's no strings attached, obviously that's, that's always a prerequisite. And as long as I can give the lens away to one of my Patreon backers, then let's, let's do it. Uh, and they said, yes. And so here it is. So of course I'll be giving this away to one lucky Patreon backer. So do check below if you're interested. Uh, it's all linked down there and it's a great way to support the channel. And plus, you know, you can win cool stuff like this. Anyway, onward. What is this? The Filtrox 20mm f2.8 is a tiny, fairly wide angle prime lens for Sony E-mount. Optically, it's more complex than I expected with 10 elements in eight groups. Some are aspherical, extra low dispersion, and the front element has an anti-fouling element because you need that. With this being so tiny, I immediately came across a, a small issue and that's the filter thread size, which is 52 millimeters. And as I use the H&Y Swift system and Revo ring products for my ND filters and, and whatnot, that's outside the range of my Revo ring. And that's not a huge issue. You just need to get a step up ring of some sort. Um, it's just something to bear in mind. You know, it's, it's an additional expense. And obviously I had to buy a step up ring to use this outdoors. And I'll tell you what, I'll, 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 I don't really need those these days, so I will include the step up ring uh, in with whoever wins this. It has an STM stepping motor style focus motor in this, and I've not really heard of Viltrox having any kind of reputation for the quality of their focus motors. So um, I'm definitely gonna have to check this out just a little later on in this video. Other than that, there's very little to mention on the features side of things. So let's now progress and move on to the build quality. Unsurprisingly, this lens uses quite a bit of plastic in its construction and that's how it weighs so little. It's actually just 157 grams and that's just a number without context. So I went looking for context. I went looking for things that weigh exactly 157 grams and it turns out, and there's no getting around it, it's a Terry's chocolate orange. And my tip of the day is not to get these two confused. This lens is not gonna be a delicious orange oil infused treat, and this is not gonna be a, a fantastic lens. So you're welcome. Incidentally, at the time of filming, this thing costs almost exactly one dollar per gram of this lens. It has a metal mount, which is good and has to be the key area to use metal on a lens. However, there's no weather sealing apart from the front element being water resistant. I'm not surprised by this, nor was I particularly disappointed when you consider the low price. Moving on to the user experience and starting with the feel. And despite it being quite plasticky, the focus ring is smooth and slightly dampened. I have to say, because it's mostly plastic and extremely light, when you handle it, it does feel a little bit budget, but remember that this doesn't necessarily mean that it's poorly made, and that in this case, lightweight is a big positive. The convenience factor of this lens is kind of just off the charts. It's so small and light that you just may as well always have it in your bag. And as for the autofocus side of things, well, you know, I, I, I didn't have kind of 
huge expectations, but having tried it, I was kind of amazed. We're talking about from a video point of view, of course, um, but when using continuous autofocus, it's completely silent. I can't hear a single thing and it transitions smoothly from focus points and yeah, stunned. It is focused by wire, as I mentioned, which people have a love-hate relationship with, but you know, this in autofocus mode on your camera, you know, stick it, uh, stick it on your camera, uh, stick it on a gimbal, and it, this is going to be great. It's going to be, you know, quiet. It's going to be, it's going to be accurate. It's going to be smooth in the way it uh, moves focus points. And plus, you've got the massive weight advantage for when you are doing gimbal work. I was planning on putting a microphone on this lens to show you any kind of focusing noise, but there's no, there's no point because there's none. The only thing that knocks down the convenience factor of this lens for me is that small filter thread. So, and that's only because I have to screw on a step up filter. Yeah, it's not going to be a deal breaker. But anyway, I'll tell you what, I'm sure what everyone wants to see is, you know, some footage taken with this lens. So let's show you now. So I went out and got some fairly rough and ready shots showing off the beautiful English weather. And I was really quickly reminded that, you know, 20 millimeters is a really tricky focal length to work with. You either need an amazing landscape or you've got to get really close to something and probably have a subject as well. Movement is important with this too, but I didn't have my gimbal with me, so everything is handheld. And I thought this was a good opportunity to pause, zoom in and see if there's any chromatic aberration. And I can't see any. The lens is stopped down a little bit, but this is a really good sign. I was really pleased with the closest focus distance as well. It's just 19 centimeters from the sensor, which you're gonna need if you want any kind of subject separation and shallow depth of field. I was also super impressed with the detail, regardless of what aperture I was at. But you know, that's not really much of a surprise because these days, you know, for videography, there really isn't such a thing as a lens that doesn't deliver the amount of detail that we need. They're all sharp because they're all good. The distortion also seems really controlled. There's no kind of crazy pincushion or barrel distortion to speak of, except for when I noticed this, a strange wobble in the corners. And I'm sure this is just the spherical elements doing their thing. And honestly, I don't think this will be noticeable in the real world, but I did notice. Next, I wanted to test for focus breathing. And this of course is where you move your focus point and your field of view changes. And it's a pretty negative thing for video. Luckily in this case, it's pretty minimal. I don't think you'd really notice this in real world situations pretty good. Next on to value for money and alternatives. And this is kind of a tricky one with this lens because you kind of have to ask yourself where your priorities lie. This is going to be a really good solution if you're looking for something that's really uh, quite wide and really lightweight. But if you need a lens that uh, maybe has a larger max aperture for really low light stuff, or if you're looking for something more rugged, they, there may be you know, other better options out there. Firstly, there's the Sony 20mm f1.8. This is my current choice of 20mm Prime. The price is fairly high for this lens. It's definitely the priciest of the bunch that I'm going to mention, but you can definitely get it for less if you shop around. It's not great value, but it is a fantastic performing lens. Then there's the Sigma 20mm f1.4 Art, and this is an awesome performing lens. I've owned it before for its higher price, but it is higher performing, and man, it's heavy. A good alternative to this could be Sigma's 20mm f2 contemporary lens. This is slightly less than the art version, and it's fair to say it's probably a step down from the art range in every category, but it's still going to be a really good lens. And then we have perhaps the closest comparison, and that's the Tamron 20mm f2.8. It's double the price of the Viltrox, but likely significantly better build quality. And so this is gonna be a really good option if build quality is a priority for you. Another interesting option is the Tokina Firin 20mm f2. It's the same price as the Tamron, but with a much larger maximum aperture. I think Tokina are really underrated, and this could be the bargain of the bunch. Next, onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros, and the obvious one, the size, the weight, 
This is just so convenient. And then we have a really, really low price. I just love it when products are friendly on the wallet. It just means it's gonna be more accessible. And relating to that, I would say this is outrageous value for money. You get a surprisingly good and absolutely silent focus motor. What's not to like about that? The distortion is very well controlled, but of course, there's that caveat which is gonna come up in the cons. I was quite impressed with the focus breathing. It's fairly controlled. I just don't think you're gonna notice it when filming with this in the real world. And then the cons, and whilst this is not poorly made, it is quite plasticky, which, you know, is not necessarily a negative because that does account for the lightweight. This is not a weather sealed product. And I know for some people, this will be a deal breaker. It's something to bear in mind. It has a tiny filter thread, obviously, this is just subjective and is only an issue if you don't have the right step ring. Finally, that distortion is a little weird. I really don't think you're gonna notice it in the real world, but I noticed in my testing that slight wobble in the corners, it's kind of weird. Finally, to my opinion, and I had fairly low expectations before this arrived because of you know the really low price, despite my dad's recommendation of Viltrox. Montpair is rarely wrong when it comes to gear, but you know, he's been using the ultra premium offerings from Viltrox for his Fuji cameras. Look, I've been really pleasantly surprised with this lens and I think, you know, if your priorities lie with things like build quality, then, you know, this is obviously not gonna be the lens for you, but otherwise, you know, and in the areas where it matters most, you know, the, the image that you get from it, it's pretty damn good. Should you buy it? Well, because of the construction and the low, low price, this feels, and I hate to say this, a little on the disposable side, meaning, you know, if you were to buy this and if at some point it broke, it wouldn't be that hard on the wallet to replace it. For me personally, having a lens which was heavier because it has a larger max aperture is kind of worth it. And here's the reason for that. The wider your angle, the harder it is to get shallow depth of field, and you kind of need more, uh, you know, sort of shallow depth of field when it comes to wide angle lenses. Otherwise, it's hard to get that kind of 3D look. Do you know what I mean? But overall, and despite my cons that I mentioned, this lens performs better than it has any right to for the price. And I'm gonna be really curious to see how it stacks up against some of the other lenses that I mentioned, particularly the Tamron and the Tokina. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting, helpful, and most importantly, entertaining. Uh, I wanna hear from you. Did I miss anything? Do you agree? I'll see you down there. Uh, I'm down in the comment section as much as I possibly can be. I've now made hundreds of videos about video and audio of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.